all right wonderful people welcome back <laughs> you don't shall uh, finally court has threatened to judge sssdg over mazin and the canoe <laughs> uh, i talk um, i don't say it go happen like this of course uh mazin and the canoe is a prophet a jewish prophet for that matter a prophet of old and um you see how this nigerian uh dss the court he, uh, because of his case uh, bintayaka also have dropped and now uh, the court has threatened to uh, jail sss dg uh, director general uh, because of mazan and the canon <laughs> i know that because of this issue of mazan and can a lot of things are still going to unfold but meanwhile let's go down to the full details of this particular information the Federal High Court in Abuja has threatened to imprison the Director General of the State Security Service, Adiola Ajayi, over the secret police refusal to allow lawyers access, access to Nam de Kano. Mr. Kano, who is facing terrorism charges, is the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. The IPOB leader has been in detention since he was brought back to Nigeria from Kenya in June 2021 under to controversial circumstances. His legal team has reportedly accused the SSS of denying them access to Mr. Kano. The Federal High Court in Abuja, in a notice issued on Friday, warned Mr. Ajayi that further denial of the lawyer's access to IPOB that would amount to a contempt of the court and might result in his imprisonment. The judge, Bintanyako, on 28 May this year, had ordered the SSS to allow Mr. Kano to receive visitors for three days in a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Take notice that unless you obey the direction contained in this order, see overly by allowing the applicant, Kano, counsel to conduct the court ordered visitation with the ap applicant on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. You will be guilty of content of court and will be liable to be committed to prison. The court warned Mr. Ajayi in the Friday notice. The notice was also uploaded on Facebook by Mr. Kano's special counsel, Aloy Ejimako, on Friday evening. Mr. Ejimako said the register of the court issued the notice. The notice was titled from 48 notice of consequence of disobedience of the order of court brought pursuance to order IX rule 13 of Sheriff and Civil Process Act, CAP 56, LFN 2004. Apart from Mr. Ajayi, the court directed that the federal government should be served with the notice through their lawyer, Adegboyega Aumolo, a senior advocate of Nigeria. Mr. Ajimako, in a statement on Friday, said the notice was necessitated by the repeated disobedience of the court ordered visitation of Mr. Kano by SSS Director General. The lawyer said Mr. Kano's legal team has not been allowed access to the IPO builder since 24th September. He explained that the notice is a quasi criminal judicial process that for once any person disobeying a court order of the penal consequences of such an act. Therefore, if Director General of SSS persists on, it, on this ignoble path, he will leave us with no other option than to commence vigorous content proceedings against him, Mr. Ejimako stated. Mr. Kano's legal team has reportedly accused SSS of denying them access to him. The legal team, for instance, accused the SSS of blocking them from visiting the IPOB leader last Monday. The lawyer on 27th September made a similar allegation against the SSS. Before then, the SSS allegedly prevented some lawyers from seeing the IPOB leader in 2021. The incident had reoccurred in 2022, about a year after. Mr. Kano was first arrested in 2015 under the administration of former Nigerian President Muhammad Buhari. The Court of Appeal Abuja on 13th October 2022 held that the IPOB leader was extraordinary rendition to Nigeria and that the action was flagrant violation of the country's extraordinary extradition treaty and also a breach of its fundamental human rights. 
The court therefore struck out the rising charges filed against Mr. Kano by the Nigerian government and ordered his release from the facility of the SSS. But the government refused to release the IPOB leader, insisting that he, Kano, could be unavailable in subsequent court proceedings if released and that his release would cause insecurity in the southeast where he comes from. The government, through the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation, later appealed the court ruling and subsequently obtained an order staying the execution of the court judgment at the Supreme Court, delivering judgment on the appeal on 15 December 2023. The Supreme Court reversed the acquittal granted to Mr. Kano by the lawyer by the lower court and consequently ordered continuation of his trial at the Federal High Court. Uh, my people, I don't see I see the happen for that matter uh, because. All right, wonderful people, welcome back. When I don't see I see the channel for that matter, where we say it concerned the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Omadi K, one of Ndibo, Odoguana, Manzuna, Nya, eh? And the banyan is so kind of more working, I'm blown working, okay, can one, and I'm be fun, I didn't enjoy. It's not about my own uh, issue, it's not about the courts giving order. It's about the citizens obeying this order because. The, the the Nigeria we found ourselves, the nation is fa we found ourselves is a nation whereby the government passed house, the, the the executive, the legislature, and even judiciary themselves are now higher than the court. Because it is in this country that uh, they will give order for a former governor to be arrested. You see the governor flaunting the order. They will give order to, for a former senator to be arrested. He will flaunt the order. This is the country where we find ourselves. It is the same country where a snake swallowed millions, monkey carried money away. This is the country where we are find ourselves. So it's not about the, the court of competent jurisdiction giving their order uh, that Kano should be allowed his visitors. It ab is about the director general of the uh, uh, state security service obeying this order. That's where I myself am pointing uh, because uh, remember that Kano was uh, discharged and acquitted. But the, through the, the federal government, through the Attorney General of the Federation, filed uh, a, a stay of execution of that particular judgment uh, that was uh, given uh, by, by the appellate court. And this will tell you that uh, the nation uh, where we find ourselves uh, is a nation where things doesn't work out well. Meanwhile, on other information, we'll be saying it concerned our sister, Abi, our brother, Bobriski. <laughs> he said, hold very dark man accountable, Bobriski re replies, Falana and Faust. Let's go down to that details. Even though this is not uh, our usual thing here, but some things, uh, we need to be here um, uh, because, of course, I told you that no cake and wine, uh, no, I didn't enjoy. Uh, it's like a uh, but risky is a car for one or something like that. A popular crossdresser Idris Okunonya, also known as Bob Risky, has asked human rights activist and lawyer Femi Falana and his son, Fularin, popularly known as Faust, to hold controversial media critic Martin Otsi, also known as Very Dark Man, responsible for defamatory content circulating on social media. The crossdresser clarified that he never gave Falana or his son any money to get a presidential pardon during his prison ordeal. But brisky response followed Falana and Faust demand for a public apology and retraction of defamatory statements made by popular crossdresser in audio recordings circulating online. The punch reports that in one of the audios shared by Very Dark Man, Bobrisky claimed that he had spoken with Faust, requesting his assistance in persuading his father Falana to help secure a presidential pardon, which alleged cost 10 million naira. The crossdresser also alleged that he asked files for 3 million to secure special treatment at Creek Creek Correctional Center. In another audio shared by Very Dark Man, Babrusi claimed to have paid 5 million upfront to a senior advocate in Nigeria in an attempt to secure a federal government pardon over charges filed against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. However, in a letter dated October 14, 2024, issued by Falana's legal representative, Olorufemi Akinyemi and Taiwo E. 
Olawale, Fabrizki was accused of making false and defamatory statements about Falana and his son's involvement in the alleged bribery and pardon. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, now who never knew a very dark man, named the call and small boy. Uh, but this is where I'll be winding down the curtain because this matter self, you know, to concern us. Uh, now the freedom matter, now you will be carrying out to call the time. Now here I go to wind down this curtain and if this is your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, uh, kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, comment and share and also remember, uh, make you the on that notification button so that when I want you to jump in, you will be the first to let them. Thank you for listening. God bless you.